Have I got a story to tell you? It's about the wild and turbulent ride that Sudan has been on lately. The country's been through a lot, from a coup that overthrew a radical dictator to ongoing fighting and unrest between different factions. It's a story with more twists and turns than a best-selling novel. But the latest chapter in Sudan's story is particularly concerning. Mass evacuations are underway as millions of foreign students and expats have gotten stranded at the borders and violence between the army and a paramilitary group called the Rapid Support Forces continues to escalate. And as always, money is at the heart of the conflict. The two sides are battling it out over control of the country's valuable resources and so far have left over 400 dead in the last two weeks. It's misfortune. And on today's episode of Counting the Cost, I'll be digging into the financial motivations behind the latest uprising. As it turns out, the generals calling the shots and causing chaos were actually allies just a few years ago. It's crazy how quickly alliances can shift in a country as unstable as Sudan. It's truly a heartbreaking situation, with civilians and diplomats fleeing the violence and hundreds reported dead from the conflict so far. It makes you wonder how much longer this cycle of instability will continue. So, here's where the story took a dramatic turn. Up until 2019, Sudan was ruled by a dictator named Omar al-Bashir. One of his key allies in the Sudanese army was General Abdel Fattah Burhan, and another was General Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, also known as Hemeti. Hemeti was in charge of Bashir's private militia, the Rapid Support Forces, or RSF. But in 2019, a popular uprising in Sudan toppled Bashir from power. Hemeti joined forces with Burhan and the appointed civilian prime minister, Abdallah Hamdok, to promise a transition to democracy. However, in a dramatic twist, Hemeti and Burhan secretly teamed up once again and staged a second coup in 2021, toppling the country's transitional civilian government. Hamdok was ousted and the country plunged back into instability. So, what's driving these men to go to such lengths to seize power? As is often the case in African countries, it comes down to resources, crude oil and gold, to be specific. Sudan is a major exporter of oil and one of Africa's largest producers of gold. With huge reserves of both, the revenue from oil alone amounted to over $1.8 billion in 2022. But despite this wealth of resources, Sudan's economy is struggling. The instability caused by the coups and ongoing fighting has led to mass protests, with people desperate to hold on to the promise of democracy. And foreign investors are pulling out, suspending billions of dollars worth of projects in the country. Even behind closed doors, the partnership between Hameti and Boran is beginning to fray. They can't seem to agree on key decisions about the transition and integrating the RSF into the Sudanese army. It's a volatile situation and one that could have far-reaching consequences for Sudan and the wider region. You know how they say you can't have two captains in command of one ship? Well, that's exactly what happened. After the coup in 2021, General Burhan started seeing General Hamidi as a threat. They were both pretty sneaky guys, always plotting and backstabbing while trying to gain power. Burhan became suspicious of Hamidi as he noticed him making grand gestures to gain the favor of influential leaders and decision makers across the country. It was like he was running for office during campaign season, and as if that wasn't enough, there were pockets of violence and clashes with the police that kept happening week after week, adding fuel to the fire. The conflict between the army and the paramilitaries has had a devastating effect on the people of Sudan. The capital city of Khartoum has been hit especially hard, but the effects of the fighting have rippled throughout the region. The lack of stability and investment has resulted in low levels of food production, which has caused food prices to skyrocket. I'm talking about a 150% increase for basic necessities like vegetables and produce, and even higher for transportation costs. There have been attempts at ceasefires, but they aren't being upheld and the international community doesn't seem to be stepping in to help. It's a pretty dire situation for the people who are living in the middle of all this chaos. They just want to find a way to get out alive. It makes you wonder if there's any hope for democracy in Sudan. 
I mean, the situation has been tough for decades. And with no end in sight, things are looking pretty bleak. What do you think about all of this? Do you think there's any chance of the conflict ending peacefully? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more episodes of Counting the Cost.